My name is Louise MacDonald and this presentation is about personal care. If providing personal care is new to you, you may feel apprehensive. Those receiving this could feel apprehensive too. Think about how you might feel in their position. Accepting personal care can be a very difficult thing, so always aim to keep the individual at ease and reassure them. Your approach matters. This is a very simple guide to give an overview of what personal care entails. If you are providing personal care, more guidance will be given in the workplace. All those supported in social care have their own individual personal plan, which will detail their particular needs. We can start our approach by checking what the person likes to be called when we're introducing ourselves and remembering the principles of good communication. There is talking and listening. Body language is also a good indicator of how people are feeling. Those working with you and the individual's personal plan will provide additional information. People being supported will have a range of health conditions, so we need to adapt our style to meet their needs. For example, you might be supporting somebody who's hard of urine. 55% of over 60s and 93% of over 80s are hard of urine. So in an older person's home, the majority of people could have moderate or severe urine loss and difficulties. Or perhaps you're supporting an individual with dementia who may find it a little harder to process a lot of information at one time. So it can help if you break the information into small pieces. Offer easy reminders and encouragement. This could be gentle reminders of which step comes next in their personal hygiene routine, like handing the person the soap or the flannel as an indicator to wash or holding the towel out when it's time to dry. Personal care is an integral part of an individual's day-to-day -day life and ways in which personal care is delivered has a direct impact on the individual's dignity and well-being. So personal care needs should be approached in a sensitive, person-centred way. Being independent promotes the individual's dignity and self-esteem, as well as giving choice and control in line with the Social Services and Wellbeing Act. Personal care can include washing, dressing, bathing, showering, taking care of appearance such as hair, nails, makeup, even shaving, and not forgetting assistance with toileting needs too. We would always encourage people to do as much as they can for themselves and not to take over any aspects of their care. We do with rather than for. It's important to maintain people's dignity and to minimise any feelings of embarrassment. We may be involved in washing intimate body parts and seeing bodily functions which are not generally shared. So allowing individuals to wash intimate areas themselves rather than doing it for them helps with that dignity and independence. Routines are important to people, such as the time of day they would prefer to shower or bath, so stick to these. When providing any form of personal care, we start with making sure we've got the individual's consent. Make sure you wash your hands and continue to follow hygiene procedures. Wear any protective clothing that's necessary. You should always be following the individual's personal plan. Know their likes and dislikes and how much help is needed. It really th helps to have everything you need to hand. Make the personal care as pleasant as it can be um, by preparing what is needed beforehand. You could look at where the individual might prefer to get undressed. Would they rather a bath or a shower? What toiletries they would prefer to use? And what might be their toileting needs? When it comes to preferences, there may also be some cultural preferences to take into consideration. These will be individual and included on their plans. 
It's important to keep checking for consent as you're carrying out personal care, making sure it's okay to proceed. Talking to people whilst you're providing care does offer reassurance, an opportunity to check how they are and if everything's still okay and provided in the way they prefer. This helps people feel more comfortable and supports dignity. Talking to people whilst providing care offers reassurance and an opportunity to check how they are and if everything is still okay and provided in the way they prefer. This helps people feel more comfortable and supports their dignity. When providing personal care, if it's washing, bathing or showering, Make sure the bathroom or the room is warm. The water's at the correct temperature. Check any aid that may be needed, for example, something for moving and handling. It's important to maintain people's privacy. So make sure any blinds or doors are shut and that no one else can enter the room whilst it's occupied by the individual. Always remember that all infection control procedures should be followed and there may be some other health and safety requirements. There could be plans in relation to manual handling or risks. They'll be available in the workplace, so these can be checked and followed. Don't forget to encourage the individual to do as much as they can for themselves. Remember, for most adults, washing is a personal and private activity. It can be really hard to adjust to change, because most of us have been carrying out these activities on our own since we were very small. With this in mind, just try and make personal care an enjoyable activity. Minimise feelings of anxiety and embarrassment by reassuring people and communicating. When you move on to dress people, thinking about their clothing, it should always be chosen by the individual and they should be supported to do this. They won't just be choosing on the basis of the weather or temperature, but their own self-expression. But importantly, people may be using their clothes to disguise some things. It could be, for example, somebody's had surgery, such as loss of a breast. They might want to hide an incontinence aid, or perhaps somebody who's had a stroke and is um, dribbling from saliva, they might want to hide wet patches. If you're not sure what to do, check with the person, they'll help guide you, but you can also seek advice from colleagues in the workplace and personal plans. Once washed and dressed, there's other aspects of care that people may want help with. This could be um, makeup, shaving, hair, all of these things make a contribution to how a person feels and their well-being. The equipment you use, whether it's toiletries, combs, razors, should all be the person's own. Because we're supporting people's care from top to toe, we shouldn't forget about oral hygiene as well. It's important to keep mouth, teeth and gums healthy. Again, we would use the individual's own toothbrush and toothpaste. Having a clean, healthy mouth encourages appetite and helps prevent oral infection. We wouldn't want any problems to develop because it could lead to problems with eating. It is a good time to check with the individual if they've got any pains, ulceration, and note any bleeding that might be present in the gums. Moving on to the other end of the body, we need to remember that looking after feet is a really important part of personal care too. Toenails can become very hard and difficult to cut for older people. Regular chiropodist appointments will solve this, but also making the feet comfortable for the individual will help. Foot problems can cause immobility, which can lead to increased dependence. But looking after the feet, such as care with the skin, checking for any broken or split areas will all help. If the skin is neglected, damage can occur and there's a risk of it becoming infected or getting worse, leading to gangrene. 
Special considerations in terms of foot care would need to be given to any individuals who are diabetic. So it's important to be aware of plans and check with the setting that you work in. In any provision of personal care, one of the most important tools you've got is your eyes. You're in an ideal position to check for any changes. This could be in terms of malnourishment, dehydration and pressure sores. You could also become aware of possible signs of abuse. So think about safeguarding training and the duty to report around abuse. Some signs of malnourishment could be dull eyes, pale skin, poor skin elasticity, thinning hair, perhaps wounds taking longer to heal, a dry tongue and cracks around the mouth. Looking out for signs of dehydration, you would look for perhaps unusually dry skin, a dry mouth, increased or extreme thirst, dark urine, repeated infections, or people could have a rapid or weak pulse. Providing personal care gives the opportunity to check for pressure sores too, which can develop anywhere where the skin is close to the bone. Those most at risk are those that are perhaps immobile or not able to move much due to their illness. Pressure sores occur in all settings and there are a number of common areas. Ears, the back of the head, shoulders, ribs, elbows, heels, thighs, knees. Look out for signs of these developing when you are providing personal care. Any concerns that you come across should be reported on and you can seek guidance in your workplace. But overall, if you are new to personal care, try and be flexible, use different approaches, communicate with the individual, find out their preferences, and take time to build trust in relationships. Thank you for listening.